I am not sure if this is just a joke <laughs> or this is an actual product, but man, I really wish that this is actually something I could buy. Hi and welcome back to the channel, I'm Steven and for today, we will be taking a look at several third-party resin figure brands like what are their quality actually like, you know? I started this series about 2 or 3 months ago, though episode 2 was almost 2 months ago. I originally wanted this to be a monthly thing. Okay, so with so many third-party resin figure brands out there, so many random names, like which one is actually good, which one is shady, we don't know, right? So the, the best way to approach this is to look at actual product pictures coming from these brands. So as usual, I have gone around the internet digging out all of the factory production pictures, like actual pictures of the figures they are putting up on pre-order because, you know, a lot of these third-party resin figure brands, they love showing us CGI rendered images and then starting taking pre-orders based on those images rather than showing us the actual product pictures, right? So we want to see what it is actually like, like are they being honest or not? Alright, so for today, episode 3, we have a few new brands and also those returning brands like Arctic Wolf Studio, Epsim Studio. I think I talk about them almost every episode because, well, I want to see how consistent they are. Like, are they consistently putting out quality products or, you know, there will be hit and miss in between. So here we have about 150 images, not too different from the previous episodes. And we shall go in alphabetical order as usual. Okay, this is actually a screenshot of a vertical video, a Reels video, right? Instagram Reels or something like that. Uh, yeah, I'm just too lazy to screen record the entire video. I just want to see the face of the figure. I think that is the most important part of any figure. So this is Epsynth Studios Diona from Genshin Impact. And man, this is looking really good, right? What do you think about the face? I think this is pretty much identical to the product pic. I mean, the official pictures shown by us from Epsynth Studio. And this is looking good. Like if you are looking for <laughs> A relatively normal Diona figure, this might be worth picking up because uh, there are so many third-party Diona figures out there which are kind of, you know, questionable in a way like... <laughs> yeah, they barely have any clothes on. If those are your kind of thing, yeah, by all means, go and buy those figures. But if you want a, <laughs> a very normal-looking Diona figure, then this is one of the top choices right now, looking great over there. Moving on to the next one from Absinthe Studio as well, Asuma Toki from Blue Archive. Okay, so why am I showing you guys a screenshot of this uh, this listing over here in at GK instead of showing you the actual product picture? Yep, you might have guessed it correctly because something has gone terribly wrong this figure. Uh, yeah, I look up very highly to Absinthe Studio, but this is a problem unique to this specific character called Asuma Toki. For some reason, I have noticed that there are some anime or game characters where <laughs> these third-party brands, they just couldn't get their faces done right. Marine Kitagawa is one example. Like, every 10 Marine figures being made out there by third parties, 7 or 8 of them look really wrong in some way. The face is off, right? And from the looks of it, Asuma Toki is also one such character. Yeah. Okay, so without further ado, we take a look at the actual product now, yeah. <laughs> what do you think about the face? I think uh, something has gone really wrong over here. To me, it looks different from the uh, official product pictures, right? Yeah, very different. Very different. Of course, uh, what has gone wrong over here? What do you think? To me, it feels like the face is very small, right? Uh, the sculpt of the face is small and then this front hairpiece is really large. So the proportion is off. Like, it feels like her face should be bigger. If you get what I mean over there, yeah. Uh, however, Epsim Studio is not the only one screwing up Asuma Toki. Uh, there were there was one, another one or two figure brands out there. Was it uh was it Miyin Studio? I can't remember anymore. 
anyways, yeah, there were at least another one or two brands who have already released uh, their figure of Asuma Toki and their faces look really weird. I think I have covered it in a previous episode uh, under this series of third-party figure brand reviews, right? So yes, uh, until today, I have yet to see a third-party figure brand getting the face of Asuma Toki done right. Not even a more reputable brand like Absinthe over here. I have no idea what is going on. But yeah, this is definitely a factory production line VR picture. As you can see, and every copy of the figure are exactly the same. So, oh, this is not good. However, regardless of my opinions on whether this figure is any good or not, when it comes to the face, I believe that this is going to sell out very quickly and becoming rare and expensive because that happened to pretty much every other Asuma Toki figure that has already been released. Yeah, so, so I just don't understand this part. Like, there is obviously something wrong with the figure, but people went for it anyway. My personal suspicion is that they have already put a deposit on the figure, right? Like, third parties, it is compulsory. No matter where you pre-order it from, it is compulsory where you need to put a down payment, uh, a deposit before uh, doing pre-order. And then after that, because they are unwilling to, you know, uh, sacrifice that amount they have put on the pre-order, they decided to pay for it and just suck it up. Like, just keep the figure and maybe try to sell it later. Who knows? But yeah, so far, uh, Asuma Toki figures, even though they have turned out to be pretty mid, they became very expensive anyway. And this is the only explanation I could think of. Yeah. Uh, no worries though, because we have Good Smile Company, for example, making a uh, figure of Asuma Toki for really cheap. If I'm not mistaken, like 12,000 yen, 13,000 yen maximum. So if you want to play safe, then yeah, go for the skill figure by Good Smile. Is that already on pre-order? I think so, right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it is Miyin Studio. This, uh, this Asuma Toki figure right here, this was released back in December last year. And yep, they screwed up her face as well, just like Epsim Studios' uh, Asuma Toki. <laughs> the final figure does not look anything like this uh, picture over here. Okay, moving on to the next one, we have the face sculpt of Clara from Honkai Star Rail by Arctic Wolf Studio. And man, this looks fantastic. Oh, this is really good. Arctic Wolf Studio is also a brand I'm keeping an eye on because I actually like their sculpting. I I personally think that their paint work can be improved further. But at least the sculpting and the face problems, none of the none of it to be seen over here. And when I say paint problems, I'm not referring to this figure. I'm referring to their previous releases, which I think was what was her name again? Silver Wolf, right? Uh, the, yeah, Silver Wolf is already out for a few months now. And once again, the sculpt was relatively decent, but it felt like the paint work could be improved upon. Now this figure of Clara, this is looking really good, right? Next one over here. Okay, Arctic Wolf Studio. This is obviously an official product photo. Kiana Herschel from Honkai Impacted. And I want to compare it with this picture over here actual product pictures. Okay, once again, Arctic Wolf Studio is doing a fabulous job with the face sculpt over here. Yeah, I know it is different angle, but to me, they look almost identical. This looks really good, right? And maybe this is an unfinished product, but I would appreciate a bit of shading on the hair. Yeah, uh, at least around the edges of the hair fringes, but this looks really good nonetheless. Ah, different angle again. I'm happy to see those blushes, those really uh, slight blushes on her under her eyes over here. That is very important. Some genuine figures, even the genuine ones, they promise you this much and then when the actual figure is out, the blush is already gone, disappeared, right? I'm happy to see it being maintained over here. I think that is something very important. Oh, of course, the feet. For some reason, the third-party companies, they emphasize a lot on the feet of their figures, the detail, the shading, and everything. Like, yeah. You can't say no to this. Like, the shading work <laughs> is really good over here. No complaints at all from me. 
Moving on to the next one. Okay, so uh, Ganyu bow figure. Uh, this figure over here, uh, there are two or three different brands making the same exact figure. Starry Sky Studio is doing the same exact figure, though the face is ever so slightly different. This one is by AYW Studio, which I wasn't aware of its existence at all. So do we have... Uh, Alright, this is the only picture we have. Personally, yeah, the face is a bit different from the Ganyu we know. I mean, at least when compared to the character design in the game or even the version made by Apex Toys. But I don't think it looks bad at all. I think the face is quite nice. So everything else about the paint work, the hair. Oh, the hair looks great. There is some, yeah, some shading over here. And the gold color paint work quite precise as well. Yeah, the paint work is quite precise. I am not seeing paint bleeding at all. Yeah, very clean paint work. So AYW Studio, not bad at all. Moving on to the next one. Okay, this is from Big Cute Studio. Uh, there are a few studios out there doing chibi figures, super deformed figures that are very similar to Nando's, but they are often bigger by 50-70%. So this is yeah, uh, SD Raiden, Raiden Shogun from Genshin Impact by Big Cute Studio. And man, this one looks really good. Once again, I really wish that there is a bit of shading on the hair over here, but everything else looks great. No complaints from me, like the paint work, very precise, yeah. I don't collect super deformed figures. I have quit Nando's more than 5 years ago, but for those of you collecting super deformed stuff, this is not bad. I believe this is like under 100 US dollars, which to be honest, yeah, 100 USD for something super deformed and tiny feels rather expensive, but if you don't mind, yeah. This is not a bad buy, simply because the figure looks quite good. Alright, more close-up pictures. Yeah, pretty precise paint work right there. Mm. Moving on to the next one from Bluefin Studio, we have 1x6 Kiel Ting Yun from Hongkai Star Real. Isn't this just a... Uh, just an official product picture? Well, except Bluefin Studio is claiming that this is actually the final product. Like, this is the proper product picture straight out from factory. So, uh, that is what they claim, by the way. Up here, it is mentioned in Chinese, Da Huo Shi Pai, which means, uh, yeah, photos of the actual product. Alright, so let's go through the picture. Uh, paint work-wise... Yeah, and the face, this looks almost identical once again to the product pictures I've seen before. Yeah, this is the CGI picture Bluefin Studio have shown us when they were taking pre-orders back then, right? Like I said earlier, uh, some companies, they like using CGI renders to take pre-orders. And sometimes we are being extra careful about it because we don't want to end up buying something which turns out to be trash. So when I compare this CGI image to the actual product, yeah, pretty good. The resemblance is there. And I would say this is turning out to look really good. We have more pictures, by the way. We have more pictures. Okay, this is version B uh, of Ting Yun by Bluefin Studio. They made two different versions. This one is like Hadaka, but very... How do I put it? Very artistic way. The pose is very nice, right? And once again, I have a CGI image over here to compare. Now, this one is not 100% the same. I think the CGI looks a lot better. The face expression, all the subtle things about the, yeah, the face expression over here. Over here, maybe it is a different, a difference in the angle. I think the angle is a bit different, right? Yeah, the lighting is also different. So, I can't tell for sure. I would say close enough. Not 100% identical, but close enough. If you ask me, this figure is a fail or a pass, I would say it is a pass. Looks quite good as well. Okay, and then we have more pictures. There you go. Okay, so... Uh, factory production pictures. So, how does a figure look so good in this so-called actual pictures, right? These pictures are obviously photographed in a studio with studio lighting, like the kind I use for my figure reviews, which is why the figures look so good, right? 
Mm, these are all studio pictures. Let's have a look at the detail. Yeah, I think they all look fine. There is a lack of shading on the outfit, but the tail, you can see shading on her hair and her tail, like very obvious over there. Okay, so speaking of figure looking way better when you use studio lighting, I have an example over here actually. Okay, uh, let me show you guys. So you see, this is what I did at home back then. I Kizuna figure, two light sources, another one from the uh, from above, right? Yeah, this kind of studio lighting with soft box, when you get it right, the figure looks amazing. Yeah, so lighting is really important when it comes to making figures look good in photographs. Now we move on to the next figure over here. This is uh, Charlotte Smoothie from One Piece by Chow Studio, CAO. Chow or Cow or anyways. <laughs> I think I have only one single picture. Now we have very nice shading work over here. Oh yeah, I'm starting to remember they did some changes on the paint work, right? Yeah. Once again, factory production line pictures. And ah, this is a picture that the studio shared. The one on the left is before changes and on the right side, they said that they have made some changes to the paint work of the figure compared to what was being promised before. Now, if you say that you can't see any difference, I don't blame you, but there is actually a very subtle difference over there. Like, you know the, I mean, look around the belly region over here, right? Yeah, the stomach region over here. Uh, the, the shading, the color transition over here is quite sudden from pink to almost white. Like, the, the color transition is a bit too sudden. So the shading looks a bit unnatural. And over here, they have rectified it so that the color transition is a lot more gradual, not too sudden into almost plain white. Yeah, these are the subtle differences over there. Did they change the skin tone, the skin color a bit? I'm not too sure. Could be lighting, right? I mean, the left side of the image is quite bright, so I can't be sure. But to me, the most obvious is the shading around the belly region. They have fixed it. And yeah, the, the final product looks a bit better. Though I don't think an average person would notice this difference anyway. I still appreciate them informing us. Okay, the next one here, we have... Power from Chainsaw Man by Cool Couple Studio. Well, for a bikini figure, swimsuit figure, I am not expecting anything outstanding, right? Uh, do I have any pictures of the face close up? No. I, yeah, the image resolution isn't very high, but regardless, uh, this is not my favorite figure of Power from Chainsaw Man, but the good news is there are so many choices out there in the third party market. If you want this figure, or I mean, if you want a figure of power, in fact, there are too many good figures among genuine figure brands already. So to me, a third party figure like this one, especially when it is not very edgy, I suspect you can cast off though. If not, something like this would be a bit hard to sell. Yeah. So the selling point for figures like this is that you can remove the outfit. Okay, moving on to the next one from CR Studio. We have Kafka, cute version from Honkai Star Real. Yeah, I don't know that. <laughs> Wakara na I post. Uh, this looks great. Like, mm, not the kind of face I like, but this is virtually the same as what I saw in the CGI render. They showed us doing a pre-order. So, yeah, I don't have any problems with this figure at all. I think she looks fine. And the fact that they mass-produced so many of them, people are actually buying figures like this. Yeah. To me, I just couldn't justify $80 or $100 for a tiny figure like that, you know? Moving on to the next one from Creation Studio, we have Pyra from Xenoblade 2. You know, Creation Studio, they are really <laughs> doing some kind of indirect marketing campaign where they are showing people a lot of their progress pictures. Like, uh, we are making this figure and then they are sharing pictures of the progress uh, when the figure is coming out or what stage they are at, what the face looks like. Like, Creation Studio is quite active in sharing pictures of their products on their social media, especially Twitter or X, right? 
yeah, this is not a very high-res image, but I think even at this distance, I could tell that they are doing a great job with the realistic face over there. And of course, they are offering an anime version face as well. Once again, this is actual product pictures. Mm, maybe this is just lighting, but to me, it feels like her nose is barely visible over here. Maybe they can fix it a bit, like make the nose a bit more prominent. But then again, this could be the fault of the lighting rather than the sculpt, right? It is possible. Mm, yeah, and here you go, the realistic sculpt. Yeah, I mean the nose, at least the nose is more prominent over here. If you buy a figure like this, would you display her with this one or this face? Let me know down in the comments below. Uh, to me, it is very likely that I would opt for buying both heads, you know, both faces because I don't like my set to be incomplete. But this is what I would still display the figure with. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, once again, I told you guys, Chinese brands, they focus on the feet a lot for some reason. Yeah, this looks really realistic, man. Realistic to a rather scary extent. Okay, next one. Oh, wow. Uh, this is from Dong Yao Studio, which I've never heard of before. <laughs> this reminds me of one of my favorite anime series out there called Euphoria. Yeah, I mean, if you have watched Euphoria before, you know what it is. <laughs> if you haven't, go and watch it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this should be Raiden Shogun, right? Yeah. This is Raiden Shogun. And the one next to her, that is actually Saber Autoria, by the way. Yep, Saber Autoria. Uh, there we go. <laughs> this is totally the kind of thing I see in Euphoria, seriously. <laughs> and, I mean, look at the amount of effort and detail they put into her Ahe Gao face expression. I am a degenerate and I am going to admit it that I like this face expression a lot. <laughs> Yeah, great job, Dong Yao Studio. Great job right there. I love the detail on this thing. Once again, shading is absent on her hair, but I think people buying figures like this don't even care, right? <laughs> Moving on to the next one, Dragonstone Studio Panty and Stocking with the Garter Belt. Okay. Uh, this is one of the best looking Panty Stocking Garter Belt figures I've seen from third parties. Not common, right? Uh, I don't see many third parties of these two characters, but oh wow. If you told me this came from a licensed figure brand in Japan, I would have totally believed you. This looks really good. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, this, uh, this blue hair girl over here, I mean, her face looks a bit weird from this angle, but if you turn the figure around, yeah, she looks so much better. So maybe it is a viewing angle issue, I'm not too sure. But... Other than that, the yeah, the rest of the figure looks really good, man. I was I'm looking for paint bleeding once again, uh, and I could not see any in this picture. And what is up with the cattle behind? Moving on to the next picture. All right, let's have a look closer look right here. I love her face so much. Once again, I don't think. She could make use of a bit of shading, but still she looks fine. Alright, next one we have Dragon Studio again. The last Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII. And man, this figure right here is among the best one in today's episode. In terms of the detail level and especially the face. Let me show you guys what I mean over here. Oh wow. That looks fabulous, don't you think? Like... This figure right here puts, uh, what is the name of the Japanese company again? Who makes Final Fantasy stuff? You know, some figure brands are so trash that I even forget their name. <laughs> Anyways, it is, it is amazing how third party uh, figure brands could come up with stuff like this, but some genuine figure brands couldn't even get the basics done right. Yeah. I'm, I was quite mind blown when I saw the face of this figure. Yeah, this... It couldn't get any better than this, man. This is amazing. Is this 1x6 or 1x4? No, I think this is 1x4. This level of detail is not possible with 1x6. I mean, you can see texture around his outfit. Yeah, everything looks like real leather. This is 1x4 skill. Moving on to the next one, we have Dragon Studio once again, the third consecutive figure. 
Yelan from Genshin Impact and I do apologize for covering up her cleavage, literally just a cleavage because a YouTube moderator once replied to my email saying that too much skin visible around the boob area is unacceptable for advertisers and I don't know how much skin is considered too much so I'm just playing it safe over there, right? Anyways, for us, the most important thing is the face and if you wanted to see those opai so much, then go and buy the figure. Uh, the face aspect, right? The face is really good. Like, uh, not every character looks good when you convert it into, you know, uh, realistic face. Some look terrible, some look okay, and I don't think this Yelan looks okay. Reminds me of that mate from Akib Akiba Mate Wars. Anyways, the paint work, like around the leg area, yeah, very precise paint work. I mean, look at the gold color trims. These white circles, they are like perfectly round, you know, no paint bleeding out. So I would say Dragon Studio is a very solid brand for 1x4 skill collectors. Moving on to the next figure over here, yeah, uh, we have DT and Ume Studio. They are known for 1x4 skills as well. Just that every figure they do, they convert it into realistic face. And this is one of those few examples where I don't like what I'm looking at. Because to me, Kamisato Ayaka and this realistic, realistic face feels incompatible. Maybe because... Kamisato Ayaka is a much younger looking character in a way and Yelan is more mature looking in a way. So for those more mature looking characters, when you convert it into realistic face, I think it feels suitable. But for those characters who are still high school student age in a way, JK age, then when you convert it into this kind of face, it feels really wrong in a way. And the next thing was that maybe the face looks a bit too elongated to you. I assure you that is the fault of the smartphone camera being used to take pictures of this figure over here. It is very likely that the face of the actual figure is not that elongated. Uh, why do smartphone cameras produce this problem? I have explained it in a video before. The link is right up there. Yeah, I explained it in detail over there. Anyways, when it comes to paint work, DT and Ume Studio in general, they do a fine job. So I'm not too worried about that. This is more of whether you can accept the face or not of this figure. Yeah. Next one, ah, Fenghua Studio, Ganyu. Ah, yeah, the one in Jack O Post, by the way. I think this was only 110 or 120 US dollars, very cheap. Uh, though you have to buy it separately, like if you want a Hadaka version, this one over here, you pay 120. You want a fully cloth version, you pay another 120, something like that. And both figures of Ganyo, I think their face looks fine. There is some mild amount of shading. You can see uh, here across the forehead is light blue and then here the, sh the colors become darker. So that is good enough for a budget figure in a way, in the world of resin figures. And the face expression, I have no issues at all. I think her face looks fine. Yeah, you see this one, her, her tongue is not sticking out in this version. Fenghua Studio, so far, the impression I got from this brand is that uh, their figures are on the budget side of things. Like, their asking price is not very high, but at the same time, don't expect any miracles when it comes to detail level. Next one, FWS and Double Z Double D Studio, Guanmei from Hongkai Star Real. I know there are a lot of Hongkai stuff because that is all we got in the recent few months. Okay, uh, as for this one, I am very impressed by the detail level on her outfit, right? Like the paint work, I could not find any fault with it. Fat company, if you guys are watching this video, yeah, learn, watch and learn. This is what I would expect, right? This kind of paint work. Okay, but the face, this is where things can get a bit subjective because this is not the same as what was being promised by the official CGI renders. Okay, let me show you guys. Right, this was what that was being promised. Yeah, uh, the most obvious is the mouth region, right? The mouth is open over here. The, the final product isn't. The mouth is closed. Her face still looks pretty. She still looks like Guanmei to me. It is not like her face has gone horribly wrong. Not the case. Just that it is indeed different. The second thing was that, yeah, because this is a CGI render, if it isn't, then maybe, you know, uh, studio lighting has something to do with it. Yeah, her hair appears to be brighter over here, right? But the actual picture, not so much. Yeah, but in this case, I would say this is more of a uh, 
and effect of lighting. This is like her hair reflecting light rather than shading. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say I have a problem with her hair, but the mouth region, what do you think? Can you accept it? As for the difference in color of her eyes, once again, I think that is lighting, right? I think they are the same. The lighting is at fault over here. Okay, moving on to the next one from Hello Studio at Free Run. Okay. Uh, there is one thing that really surprised me in this picture. This one single pic over here, it is the background. The paint and thinner they are using, that is from Mr. Hobby. I thought that Chinese figure brands would use their own homegrown Chinese branded paint to save on the cost because, yeah, Mr. Hobby stuff, they are not cheap. And I know that those are Mr. Hobby stuff because I have the same ones in my own studio, right? So they are actually using quality paints over here. However, about this free rent over here, I don't even need to, uh, need to compare it with the official product pictures. Like this is more of a different art style in a way. I am not going to complain that uh, this is not the free one I know or I've seen in the anime. She looks different. Yeah, of course she looks different because this is more of like a different art style. Different artist, different style. And whether you like it or not, that is subjective. But yeah, this feels very out of character to me. <laughs> so the face to me is quite pretty, but that is about it. It feels out of character to me. Moving on to the next one from Hinami Studio with Nefertari VV. Alright, if I remembered correctly, this was a fairly cheap uh, figure, 120, 130 bucks or so. Huge bright forehead right there, brighter than even my own future. So, no issues at all. This looks fantastic. Yeah, no shading. Yep, no shading. But given the asking price of this figure, yeah, I won't complain too much. Hmm. Alright, moving on to the next one. Wow. 1 by 4 skill Bayonetta, like, uh, there was a genuine skill figure of her that came out many years ago. Was it Orchid Seed? I can't remember anymore, but it was long ago. Rare AF nowadays. Now we have Hummingbird Studio doing 1 by 4 skill. And in my opinion, this is one of the must-haves for fans of Bayonetta, simply because we don't get figures of her very often. My favorite thing about this figure is that the realistic leather around her body, her body suit, yeah. It almost looks like she is wearing Gucci all over her body, but at least this is way cheaper than a Gucci bag. Uh, yeah, amazing work by Hummingbird Studio, man. Can't say that I like the base at all, but if I can put that aside, this is a great buy. Even if she cost $600, $700, still a worthy purchase simply because there are not many Bayonetta stuff out there. Next one from Hunyo Studio, we have Bailu from Hongkai Star Real. And if there is one thing that caught my attention, it is the tears around her eyes over there. It looks almost 3D in a way. I'm not sure if that is decal or they actually sculpted it, you know, like a solid object over there, a solid translucent object. If that is the case, wow, I love it, right? Face, no problem at all. Great work. Yeah. Simple figure for sure. Next one over here from Hyperspace Studio, we have Raiden Shogun. Okay, uh, I know some of you are going to say this does not look like Raiden Shogun at all, but uh, the brand Pro, uh, Hyperspace Studio promised us that this is what her face looks like, right? Uh, right. Here we have a Hegao face, which I love so much. But even more importantly, I like the paintwork, all this gradient paintwork. Yeah. Oh, the details are really good. Okay, so we take a look at the official product pictures. Yeah, this is one of them. This was official product pic. And if I would compare this to final pic over here, I would say they are, yeah, they are very similar. So great work coming from Hyperspace Studio. Some of you complained about the Hu Tao figure, which came out before this one, saying that there were some subtle differences between what was promised before but I think they did a better job over here with, yeah, with this Raiden Shogun. And I mean, look at the paint work of this. Is this, this Yae Miko? It is, right? In a fox form? Yeah. I mean, look at the transition from the magenta pink to white. Oh, that is so smooth. I love it. 
Moving on to the next one, Imagination Studio. We have a few figures from them. The first one is Jing Liu. This is a work in progress. I pre-ordered the one by Absinthe, not Imagination Studio. But man, they are doing a fine work with her face over here. Her face looks great. Yeah. And yeah, all these silver trims, I think it is not yet complete, right? There is supposed to be some object over here. This is still incomplete, but all I care about at the moment is the face and she looks fine. Are there some lipstick? I can't tell. They better paint her lips a bit. Yeah. Next one also from Imagination Studio, Yae Miko. I am beginning to regret not pre-ordering this one. Like, I think the reason why I did not pre-order this Yae Miko was because I did not like her base that much, I think. But, boy, look at that face right there. This is already one of the best Yae Miko third-party resin figures out there already, when I look at her face. And that is not easy, because there are so many companies making a figure of her, with their own variations. But, yeah, this is one of my favorites already, right? Uh, this is the casual outfit version with the important parts visible, if you know what I mean. Hee <laughs> hee. And, okay, the face sculpt. I think from this angle, it looks a bit weird, but if you look at her from the intended angle, which is this angle, she looks fabulous, right? I have no complaints at all. And yeah, this is the game outfit version, where we take a look at the paint work. Yeah, everything is precisely painted. No bleeding at all. Hmm. Next one, yeah, the game version. You know, I think I like the three branches on this casual outfit version a lot more. Yeah, I like the base of this version, but I like the outfit on the game version. Uh, the game version comes with this base. I think it is different, right? Is it the same base? I can't tell. But in this picture, her base looks really cluttered and messy. Mm, they could be the same base, I can't really tell. Anyways, we move on to the next one, In and Ayu Studio. So this studio is mostly known for uh, lower budget figures in the resin figure market, like $120, $150 range, their figures. Uh, VV from One Piece. Once again, I don't think they could do anything wrong with the face of One Piece characters, yeah. And boy, the couch turns out to look really good. The colors are a bit too dull to my liking though. Oh, two face expressions right there. Did they steal the same dress from uh, an Azalean character? What was her name again? Blue color hair, wearing the same shiny silver dress. What was her name again? Was it, o uh, no, it wasn't Owari. What was her name again? I can't remember. Uh, it feels like they stole the same dress from that Azalean character. Next one over here. Oh my, this picture is so small. Light Team Studio Violet Evergarden. Okay, we have a bigger picture. Good. Uh, the thing is that I don't like the face on this version. I don't like it. Uh, this is different from the anime. Is it, is it based on the novel or manga cover? I'm not too sure, but... Uh, not my kind of Violet Evergarden figure. I've seen better than this. But everywhere else, like the outfit... Mm, yeah, everywhere else is okay. For me, the face is the most important part. Are there any LEDs inside? There better be. It looks like there is, right? It is translucent. Maybe there is LED inside. Yeah. Next one from Lingzer Studio, we have Gappert Landau from Honkai Star Rail again. Oh. <laughs> the first thing my eye is being attracted to is the whatever giant weapon he is holding over there. Woo. I am a detail freak, you see? I love details. What do you think about his face? To me, it looks like another generic uh, main character in Isekai anime in a way. <laughs> and this picture almost reminds me of an FGO character. Yeah, in a way. Reminds me of Proto Saber. <laughs> mm. Yeah, he is looking really good, right? He looks really good over here. 
Next one, we have Lulan Studio. Ah, I remember this Gonya from Hongkai Impacted. She comes with a giant motorcycle. And I contemplated pre-ordering this one. And she is turning out to look really good. Is this even 1x6? This is huge, man. This is huge. Man, wow. Yep, there we go. Motorcycle. Can't do much when you are poor, right? You can't pre-order that many. You have to be selective with what you pre-order. Is this seriously 1x6 skill or is this actually 1x5 or even 1x4? This is massive, man. Or maybe there are two different skills. This is also by Lulan Studio, also Bronya, but way smaller. Yeah, her face looks fine. Hmm. This is 1x6. I think the other one was way bigger. <laughs> Bronya, oh, I see. This is the office version. Completely different figures from the one earlier on the motorcycle. And wow. Now, I love that paintwork on the hair over there. See, this is what I mean. This gradient over here. I love that. I wish that every figure brand would paint like that. Next one, a really good looking figure of Tsunade from Naruto. This is by Muye Studio. Oh, that is... <laughs> the face is one thing. Now the texture on her outfit is catching my attention as well. This is 1x6 skill. Mm. Very good purchase right here. Is this lighting or actually shading in the paint? I think this is actual shading, right? Mm. Moving on to the next one from Neko and UC Studio, we have uh, Mobile Battle Girl, apostrophe, of course. This is uh, RX-78 to Gundam. Uh, Gundam Girl, by the way. Mm. The face on this one is pretty, at least, right? I think the previous episode, we had a train wreck, the Zaku girl, that was really bad. But this one, by a different studio, I think. The Zaku girl wasn't by Neko Studio. This is a different studio and she looks so much better. Next picture. Oh, this looks amazing, man. And even better is the rear view of this figure. I love that shield so much. Alright, uh, this is a good buy. This is a good buy. If you guys have noticed by now, there are barely any bad third-party resin figures at all in today's episode. Except for that Asuma Toki figure earlier by uh, Absim Studio, but everyone screws up her face anyway. And maybe Ruanmei's figure, yeah, the one by FWS Studio was a bit questionable, but not bad looking. So far, everything looks great, including this Rebecca. I still prefer the one by Absim Studio when it comes to Rebecca, where, yeah, there's the explosion base. A lot of you bought it, apparently. Next one, we have PG Studio Hunter Hunter Kilwa Zoldik. Now, this one, whew, I think I would rather you buy this one over here over buying Free Inks 1x4 skill. Yeah. Texture on his outfit once again. I know they are not directly comparable, right? This is likely to be 1x6 skill, but still... Mm, not very high res image, unfortunately. Next one, uh, PJ Studio. PJ Studio is a licensed resin figure brand. Like every character they do, it is like their own original character. So I won't be surprised that their quality is top notch, right? I mean, look at that. The, the makeup, it feels like they did a proper makeup on her face in a way. Yeah. I have a friend who is a big fan of PJ Studio. Here is another PJ Studio figure. Mm, original Mage Collector. Feels like I'm looking at a League of Legends character right here. PJ Studio, they really put a lot of focus on the face, like, you know, the way they do the, yeah, the shading on the eyes, the makeup in general, that's what I call it. Yeah, they fo they actually put a lot of attention. And even the eyebrow, see? The eyebrow looks really realistic, right? 
Next one, Player One Studio O. This is also top 3 best figure in today's episode. Player One Studio Berserk, Wings of Darkness, Femto. Well, I think the pictures will, will say everything I need to say, right? Look at that, man. Uh, I'm not into collecting this kind of stuff, but man... <laughs> Look at that, man. Wow. It is quite hard to believe that something like this is coming from a third party when even the licensed genuine brands would have a hard time catching up to this level of detail and quality. Alright, next one, we have Pofang Studio Nami from One Piece. Mm, this is... I don't know, man. Uh, not to say there is anything wrong with the figure, but I don't like her face. Pole dancing, yeah, pole dancing. With an X. Oh, yeah, this one has an LED in the base, I think. Yep, there we go. But still, I don't like her face. Wow. <laughs> if they're making so many, I suppose that people are actually buying them. But I don't like her face at all, man. Next one, Chi Feng Studio. Okay, this must be a licensed figure, if I remembered correctly. Yeah. Licensed figure, I don't remember the name of this character. I mean, if you compare her face over here to whatever makeup that PJ Studio has done earlier, yeah, PJ Studio did a way better job, right? Way better. Not to say that this figure is bad looking anyway, I think she looks fine, just that uh, there is... Once again, a lack of shading. I have no idea how many times I have complained about this over this episode alone. Yeah, everything feels really plain in a way. Part of the problem is the color scheme. Like, everything feels very monotonous. Monochrome colors, white, silver, gray, you know. Next one, ah, SHE Studio, Ereshki Gal from FGO. Mm, this is actually one of the better looking third party figures of Ereshki Gal or Tosaka Rin face as I call it because so far every third party figures of her that has been out including Ishtar or any other derivatives of Tosaka Rin every single one of them did not look good at all this is one of the better looking ones mm. It is such a shame that her base is almost an afterthought over here. Yeah, the base is ugly. <laughs> this is the official product picture, right? And then, uh, unfortunately, I don't have any close-up pictures of this factory pic. But if I were to zoom in a bit, I think this is fairly accurate to what was being promised over here. Yeah. And if this is the face I'm getting, I, I don't think I have much to complain. Given that there are so few third-party resin figure brands that are doing FGO characters, for some reason, I could only imagine FGO isn't very popular in China. Yeah, this is the official product pick. Next one from Sunbird Studio. Once again, uh, this brand, they do a fairly budget range figure, $150 or less. Uh, Yae Miko again, and I think it really is, it, it, it is really obvious over here. To me, this figure feels rather meh. I feel like I'm looking at a pop-up rate level figure in terms of detail, but I'm pay paying $150 for it, and I don't know, man. I would rather save up longer and buy the Imagination Studio version earlier because that one looks so much better, even if she cost double as much. I would rather you buy less figures and focus on quality instead, right? Moving on to the next one, okay. Tofu Figure Studio, they are really <laughs> playing a dangerous game because Bandai could come after them anytime for doing figures of Uma Musume. Anyways, we have Rice Shower over here and they seem to be doing a great job with her. Once again, I would love to see shading around all of her outfit, right? But still, her face. Oh, that is great work. She looks good. You need to remember that we need to look at this figure from the front, from the proper angle, not from a, not from the wrong angle. 
and yeah we have some subtle shading over here different shades of brown color <laughs> moving on to the next oh we have more pictures yeah i mean yeah the paint work is great we have some shading on the stockings though there we go some shading on the stocking i wish that we get the same kind of painting on her apron and elsewhere though next one we have tokito moichiro from yu king studio hmm I wonder how fragile all these effect parts are. This is like him in his fully awakened form. Uh, I don't collect Kime Yaiba and I don't plan to, but this one appears to be quite the good purchase. Yeah. So far from the looks of it, only female characters uh, get better figures when it comes to genuine figures from Kime Yaiba. Male characters other than Tanjiro, every other character feels like an afterthought. Unless we are talking about Free Inks 1 before skill Rengoku. <laughs> okay. Next. Oh, more pictures, man. Next one from Waku Waku Studio, we have Your Forger from Spy Family. Yeah, this could be easily be mistaken for a genuine figure, right? The face is spot on, exactly like what we see in the anime. And ah, the realistic looking jeans, love it. Next figure, what do we have? Wow. <laughs> Tieception. <laughs> Ghosts of very nice ties. Okay, next one here we have Fushiguro Toji from Jujutsu Kaisen by We Are A Design Studio. It is one of the dumbest name I've heard, but at least they are doing a great job their figures, right? Mm. See this texture over here on his outfit? I love it, man. This is the kind of thing genuine PVC figures are not doing. Oh, I see. For a moment, I thought I was looking at the back side of a pig over there. <laughs> hmm. I must have saved so many pictures because I was impressed with the detail level of the figure, right? Okay, next one here. Okay, this is the official product picture of Noshiro from Azalin by x -Pick Studio, right? And here we are uh, getting an anime version work in progress. While she does look like Noshiro to me, I think it could be improved upon further. Is there a slight misalignment in the eyes? No, no, no. Just me seeing things. The eyes are fine. Yeah. If you want a 1x4 skill figure of Noshiro, but you want the anime version, yeah. This is looking great indeed. Next one from x -Pick Studio as well and ACY Studio, we have Implacable from Azalane and this is pretty indeed, right? This is really pretty. Hmm. 1x4 skill, man. Even Freeing has not done a 1x4 skill figure of her yet. Uh, Alright. I'm checking out once again for paint bleeding. This gold color trims. Oh, there is a bit of it over here. Well, the picture is too uh, it's too blurry to be certain. Maybe it is not, right? Uh, is that paint bleeding? I can't tell. It is too blurry. But overall, the figure looks great. Oh yeah, I saved this picture for comparison reasons, you know? And she indeed does look as advertised, right? Yeah, exactly the same as advertised. No problems over here. Next one, uh, Bailu, right? Yep, Bailu from Hongkai Star Wheel by Year Toys Studio. Mm. Wow, the paint work is fabulous, man. The gradual shading. I love the paint work on the hair over here. Is there a picture of her face? Yep. <laughs> yeah, pretty adorable. I actually like that crying face on the previous figure earlier. What was the name again? What studio again? I prefer the crying face. But the paintwork on the hair, this is so much better. Can't have it all. Anyways, I'm sure that yeah, those of you who like barely legal uh, <laughs> characters without any clothes on, 
this is not a bad buy at all. Uh, next one, Year Toy Studio Hong Kai Style by Lu. Wow. Yeah, you can display her with clothes on, obviously, right? There are so many of them. They must have gotten a lot of pre-orders. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, two face plates too. It is really hard to say which is better because every brand are doing fabulous jobs. Okay, next one, Ting Yun again, Hong Kai Star Rail again from Yin, Yin, Yin Yuan Studio, which is actually Imagination Studio, by the way. Oh, they did a fabulous work. That, oh, I like this so much, man. Exactly the same as, yeah. This was the CGI image. And this is what we got. Yeah, they are identical, man. Don't you just love it when the figure brand shows you a CGI image and you are like, nah, this brand is lying to us. Then they are going to give us junk later. But this is what you get, man. This is a pleasant surprise. I can be quite pessimistic at times, but I'm happy to see this figure brands prove me wrong. I would go as far to say this is quite a bit better than the previous Ting Yun figure earlier. I like this a lot more. Factory pictures once again. Yeah, if you love armpits, then this is the Ting Yun figure to go for. Do we have anything else? Yo Yo Studio Makima from Chainsaw Man. Wow. The lighting is so dramatic over here, but I can barely see the face. I don't have any close-up pictures of her, only these two pictures. But if I were to zoom in a bit, I think her face is looking fantastic. Like, this is very close to one of the best-looking Makima faces I've seen from third parties. Like, they are making her look very demonic, very evil. And that is what I actually love about this figure, right? Because she has uh, always given off this very shady uh, shady aura. Like there is something wrong with her somehow. You know that. But yeah. And this kind of face expression is perfect for her. This does not look cheap. I think this is five six hundred dollars minimum. But this is an amazing purchase for sure. And we have the last picture over here. I am not sure if this is just a joke <laughs> or this is an actual product, but man, I really wish that this is actually something I could buy. Uh, what company is this? I have no idea at all. I just somehow saw this picture online and I wanted to share it with you guys. <laughs> yeah. Like, are there any third party resin figure brands doing figures of Bochi? I mean Hitori Goto, but with all these funny faces, I think they would actually sell quite well. Like, don't keep this just for, you know, Nandoroids. Do a skill figure of her with all these funny faces. I'm sure people will buy it. Yeah. And that is all for episode 3 of which third-party resin figure brand is best. Yeah, once again, there are barely any bad figures into this uh, episode, telling us how good these third-party figure brands have become. Unfortunately, the worst figure in this episode is Asuma Toki. So, should you not trust Absinthe Studio? Now, my uh, my view on this is that I would see Asuma Toki and Barin Kitagawa, these two characters, as exceptions because many figure brands are unable to get their face done right somehow. I don't know what is the reason. But outside of these two characters, so far, they have been pretty consistent, right? And... Yeah, I'm looking forward to my pre-order of a couple of Epsim Studio figures. One of them is Jing Liu. Let's hope that I could afford it when she is finally being released. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, if you found this figure to be informative or helpful in any way, give this video a like, a thumbs up, and subscribe to this channel for anime figure content every week. And until then, I'll see you guys again very soon. Goodbye.